I knew it. I knew that my first presentation on this subject would make some of you angry. How dare I assert that something with a smaller number is actually deadlier than something with a larger number. That is counterintuitive. And humans don't like counterintuitive things. But let me tell you something. The universe and reality, they don't care what you like. They are what they are. And you would do well to accept it. Now let me give you a couple examples of some counterintuitive things. First of all, the Earth is not flat. It's a sphere. Secondly, you are not sitting still right now. Yeah, you, wherever you are watching this, you are moving at hundreds of thousands of miles per hour. I know. What, has Donnie Reed lost his mind? No. I'm pretty sure we all know that the Earth spins on its axis once every 24 hours, but the speed at which it does this is approximately 1,000 miles per hour at the equator. Uh, from the equator, if you go towards the north or south pole, uh, because of the way reality works, it'll be a slower speed. But regardless, it's roughly 1,000 miles per hour. Now, we also know that the Earth orbits the sun once a year, right? Do you know how fast? It's about 67,000 miles per hour. So first of all, you're spinning around in a circle like this at 1,000 miles an hour. You're also going around the sun like this at 67,000 miles per hour. I don't even want to tell you how fast our whole solar system orbits the center of our galaxy because it'll drive you crazy like me. It makes me dizzy sometimes just even pondering it. But I'm gonna tell you anyway, you can suffer like I do. It's about 500,000 miles per hour. Yeah, 500,000 miles per hour. Go up to somebody on the street today and say, hey buddy, did you know you're going a half a million miles an hour right now? And see what they say. They'll look at you like you're insane. But it's the truth. That is how fast you're going right now. And it's counterintuitive. Doesn't matter because it's the truth. And so is my examination of the 25 caliber versus the 30 caliber. Now this whole presentation today presupposes that I'm using the exact same guns I used for part one. This is a 25 caliber FX Impact X with the power plenum, 700 mil barrel, firing the 33.95 grain JSB pellets at 965 feet per second average, which is about 70 0.21 foot-pounds on average. The 30 caliber is an FX Impact Compact M3 shooting the 44.75 grain JSB pellet at about 843 feet per second average or 70.6 three foot-pounds on average. That is what we're comparing today. Firstly, let us define deadliness. It is unanimously accepted by the FBI, by the United States military, by ammunition manufacturers, by medical professionals, that shot placement is the first most important part of the effect of a wound. The second most important factor is penetration. Huh, that was weird. And the third most important factor is the permanent tissue damage created by the projectile. Now this, this correlates directly 
to air guns and pellets and slugs, whatever air gun projectile you shoot. But it is a direct correlation between air guns and firearms for the wounding effects of a projectile. Concepts like knockdown power or hydrostatic shock, these things are nowhere in the established testing protocol set forth by people that do this for a living. Nowhere in the FBI testing protocol do they measure transfer of energy or knockdown power or hydrostatic shock. These things are nonsense. And just like the FBI and the military and everybody else in the world that does this with any iota of credibility, I will not be testing for these things either. We will be testing for penetration. Man, that's weird. I hope that doesn't happen every time I say penetration. Okay, I think it stopped. But anyway, we're testing for penetration and permanent tissue damage. Now, while I hate anecdotal evidence, I have to include an anecdote in this presentation. I left this out of part one, but I'm just gonna have to include it in part two. Part of what spurred me to this examination to begin with was a customer of ours. This customer is a butcher. He butchers animals for a living. And he wanted an air gun to dispatch hogs at point blank range. He bought a very popular 30 caliber air gun and some JSB 50.15 grain pellets. Few days go by, he comes back and says, it did not work. I said, it didn't work? He says, no. And he proceeds to tell me the story and actually showed me video of the pellets bouncing off of these hogs' skulls. Now these hogs were immediately dispatched with a firearm, but point being, the 30 caliber air gun at 70 foot-pounds with the 50.15 grain JSB did not penetrate the skull of these hogs. Now these were large hogs, they were 200 plus pound farm hogs. They weren't, you know, feral hogs. But regardless, it did not work. So I said to myself, would the 25 work at 70 foot pounds? Now we never did get the opportunity to do that direct test using a 70 foot pound 25 on the hogs. But regardless, it spurred the question and will help demonstrate what I mean when I say the 25 in this particular instance is the deadlier caliber. Now because of this and because of what people assume and expect they can do with a large caliber air gun, hard target penetration absolutely equates to deadliness here. As illustrated in my anecdote, a pellet that does not penetrate into the skull is useless. And there's obviously a limit to the penetration capability of any projectile. Now to quantify the difference between the two calibers, I shot a bunch of different kinds of wood until it illustrated the effect that I intended. I found two one half inch thick boards of oak. I placed them one inch apart and shot both of them, you know, both of the guns at them from 10 yards. Watch this video. Hey everybody, here are the boards I just shot. Here's one. And as you can see, the pellet went completely through. This is the hole 
were in question right here. It went through. And when you line it up with this one, you can see it also went completely through the other one. Stay tuned. As I'm sure you could tell by the slow motion video, since you saw the pellet bounce, this is the hole in the first board from the 30. This is where it hit the second board and did not penetrate the second board. Now I'm assuming you saw what I did. And I repeated this test several times. I just did it once on video for the sake of expediency here. But the 25, every time I tried it, would penetrate both boards. The 30 caliber, every time I tried it, would penetrate one board and bounce off of the second. Clearly, the 25 caliber will out penetrate the 30 caliber on a hard target. You really can't question that. I'm telling you, I'm showing you that is the result of my experiment. That is a fact. The winner of this category is the 25 caliber. Now, on to the soft target testing. One of the main complaints I heard from the part one video was that I used ballistics gel and that it was not a good representation of what would happen in actual animal tissue. Fair enough. This time, for my soft target, I got two pork loins and placed them end to end. Now, just a spoiler alert here. The results in the meat were almost exactly the same results that I got in the gel. I'm not saying that they're exactly the same, and nor am I saying this is the amount of penetration you should expect in a living animal. I had no hide to shoot through. I did not hit a random bone or sinew of any kind. So the amount of penetration you see here does not equate to what you'd see in a living animal. You should expect less than this in a living animal. Now again, Penetration is one of the most important factors for the wounding effect of a projectile. Therefore, the one that penetrates further is deadlier. I don't want to hear about your energy transfer nonsense. I'm telling you what the FBI says, what the military says, what medical professionals say, not what some random dude on YouTube is telling you. Anyway, have a look at this video. And you tell me what the difference is between the 25 and the 30 caliber in permanent wound, the permanent cavity left by these projectiles. Have a look. Okay, now we are going to quantify the actual difference in tissue damage between a 33.95 grain JSB 25 caliber round nose dome pellet and a 30 caliber 44.75 grain round nose domed JSB pellet. Hang tight.
Okay, the first thing we want to look at is our entrance holes. Here's the 30 caliber, and here is the 25 caliber. If there is a difference, it is not very much. The second thing to note here is that both pellets achieved 100% penetration through the first pork loin and both entered the second. So far as I can tell, there is no appreciable difference in the size of those holes. Okay, the next thing to note here is that this is the second pork loin. Here is our 30 caliber pellet and here is our 25 caliber pellet. There was no appreciable difference in the size of the wounds. Anything that looks big is because I cut it open. The size of the holes that led here were exactly the same size. Uh, let's see, the first loin. Let's see, the 25 went through 11 inches. The 30 cal went through 10 inches. And then the 30 cal went, we'll go to the tip of the pellet, 7 inches. So that's a total of 17 inches of penetration in this meat, which is almost exactly the same thing I got in the gel. Now we had 11 inches of travel through this loin for the 25, plus... Mm, 10, yeah, plus 10. So we had 21 inches of penetration for the 25. The difference in penetration being 4 inches. See? 4 inches. So, those that would argue the 30 caliber will damage more tissue are off by four inches apparently in pig muscle tissue now i'm going to try to split the first block open in such a way that we can actually see the wound tracks stay tuned Better done from the bottom. Hey, there you have it. Okay, folks, there you have it. This is the wound track from the 25 caliber. 
This is the wound track from the 30 caliber. And actually, this is the other side of the 30 caliber. Right there. Now, you tell me, is there a difference, an appreciable difference in the size of those wound tracks? No, there is not. Let me try to get you some close ups here. Okay, again, here's the 25 entrance and the wound track. This is the entrance for the 30, and this is the wound track. And this is the other side of it. Entrance, wound track. There is no appreciable difference. If anything, it looks like the 25 did more damage on entry than the 30 caliber did. So, again, you tell me. Now I'm gonna assume you're a rational human being and that you saw the same thing that I saw. There was no appreciable difference in the size of those entry wounds. There was no appreciable difference in the size of the wound tracks of either of those projectiles. The only appreciable difference was the amount of penetration. The 30 caliber stopped at 17 inches, the 25 caliber stopped at 21 inches. That is a difference of 24%. The 25 caliber penetrated 24% deeper and therefore damaged 24% more tissue. I again assert with a mountain of collected evidence that when you have these guns both set at 70 foot pounds and using the exact projectiles that I'm using for this test, the 25 caliber is the deadlier caliber. And yes, deadlier is the correct term to use, even though a lot of people want to tell me it's not. It is. The 25 has a better chance of penetrating a skull than a 30. The 25 will penetrate further in soft tissue than the 30. It is by the FBI, the military, medical professional, ammunition manufacturer, by their protocol, it is the deadlier projectile. Now, I know a lot of you are still going to disagree and tell me how dumb I am and so forth, but you can't tell me I ain't pretty, right? But anyway, I want to ask you, upon what exactly is your objection based? Have you ever tested this yourself? Have you researched it and I mean from credible sources, to see what deadlier really means. Hydrostatic shock, that's nonsense, nonsense. Even if that phenomenon occurs, and it's defined as damage to a remote part of a body that was not touched by a projectile. Even if that phenomenon exists, Air guns do not have the velocity or the energy to create such a pressure spike in an animal. Rifle calibers, 308, 556, you might have an argument there, but not in handgun energy levels, not in air gun energy levels. Now, I don't care. I do not care which one of these is deadlier. I am simply telling you which one is. I thank you for watching, and you all stay tuned, stay safe, and happy shooting. Hi, I'm Dennis Baker with Baker Air Guns. Thanks for stopping by. Click the link below.